Okay, hello everyone. So I appreciate that you are here at that late time. Uh, my name is Selad Stachov, and I'm the author of RSPMD Open Source Spam Filtering System, and also I'm FreeBSD developer for more than 10 years. Uh, in this talk, I will talk about one particular integration of RSPMD, in, and, and actually it's about integration of uh, RSPMD in FreeBSD email. Uh, this talk won't be about performance of RSPMD because this relays doesn't process more than one millions of messages per day, and I consider this volume as very low, so I don't care about performance at all. So the uh, the tasks uh, were how to build uh, spam filtering, because nobody likes spam, and especially nobody likes spam in mailing lists, and because mailing lists are the main source of uh, information, and you hate to archives like spam messages and so on and so forth. So that's quite important task, and here are some explanation about what was difficult. So let's start about to this talk about uh, talking about the architecture of FreeBSD mail. So uh, there are a couple of uh, MXs, and I'll draw some sort of flows of mail here. So we have free fall where all developer e accounts live, and there are also aliases. So email comes to MX1, and it integrates with free fall to operate with local email. Uh, then we have mailman, which operates via MX1, and MX2 is used for outbound spam. For, sorry, for outbound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> spam as well. <laughs> Uh, then MX1 inter, in, uh, operates with MX2. MX2 can uh, send uh, back and deliver state notifications via MX1. Freefall can send email via MX2. Mailman can send emails to Freefall for local users. And that's, that was my opinion about all this system. <laughs> so luckily we, ha we had some sort of help of the postmasters, in particular from Rem Kolodger and uh, Kirill Ponomarev. Uh, and they actually built uh, RSPMD in these complicated mail flows. I did just small adjustments, actually. So the main problems of uh, the email architecture is that we have very complicated mail flows. So there are many uh, relays, uh, many aliases. So lots of users uh, prefer to use something like Gmail instead of using of local clients. And actually, it complicates the situation. Uh, and also email has very non-trivial circuits. So in some cases I could see like 16 received headers in, for a single message because it constantly ping-pong between different relays. And there are lots of legacy decisions because FreeBSD mail is almost as old as FreeBSD. So lots of decisions are from 90s when we had something like UTP. Uh, so the decision to filter spam and some other stuff was to add RSPMD because I'm a free busy developer and I'm the author of RSPMD and I suggested Postmasters to try this project because it's free and open source and to, to resolve our issues. So that's some, something about RSPMD, so it has web interface. That's not free busy relay, that's just uh, my random relay. Uh, and internally, it's represented as a complicated system of different layers. It uh, integrates with MTA using MILTA in, in our case, so we use Postfix and hence we use MILTA. Uh, in, in our situation, we don't use separate uh, proxy layer. We combine proxy and scan layer, so it's, it, it's operating, it, it, it operates in self-scan mode. And internally, it uses different uh, things. And actually, all of them, with the exception of bias, are used for now. So we use even neural networks. I'll talk about it a bit later because it's a bit tricky topic. So what problems uh, we've tried to res resolve with RSPMD? So the first one is actually spam in the mailing list. We don't like spam. Nobody likes spam. Another problem, which was also quite important, was that uh, we break the Kim signatures when they pass over mailman. And we wanted to do some sort of controlling of our mail flows because we had completely no understanding about how mail goes and how to make it better. Well, 
not this one. Uh, so, uh, my personal motivation was, was mainly to reduce amount of spam in my mail client. And actually, that's some of samples of messages that I've constantly received from FreeBSD mailing lists. And what's more important, I couldn't filter them because my profile of RSPMD, my own RSPMD local, uh, was so that actually mailing, ma mails from FreeBSD lists are usually trusted. So the vast majority of emails from free, free busy lists are actually ham, and they, are, they have very low score, low negative score. And also free BSD relays are listed in some of uh, DNS whitelists. So basically it's impo impossible to use any RBLs and other stuff because they're hidden uh, beyond the uh, free BSD relay. That's why I constantly asked about let's let's install RSPMD, let's install RSPMD and try to do something better because my filter can filter these emails and your filter cannot. So now I still receive some spam from free busy lists because actually we are currently quite cautious about rejecting email. But what you can see that there is special symbol called spam flag. It means that the relay on FreeBSD marked this message as junk and actually RSPMD can recognize this and, tr and treat this email separately. So this email was in my junk folder, luckily. And actually that's quite good. So in, in future we plan to reduce reject score and to increase probably uh, junk score to filter more emails. Because currently, that, that's the profile of our today's statistics. So the vast majority of emails are ham. But actually this uh, statistics is a bit skewed because basically on mailing lists, on each email that comes to mailing list, we have like 200, 1,000 of emails that are coming out. And actually, because of this complicated schema, we, we see these messages many times. And since we send these emails to all our subscribers, we actually have a situation when we like, multiply one ham message and send it many times. Obviously, if message has been rejected, we don't send it to subscribers. And that's why this profile is a bit difficult to understand because basically it, 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 it's not true that the vast majority of emails are spam, are, are, sorry, are ham. Because we have lots of spam, but due to this multiplication effect from mailing lists, we don't see this in, in this stuff. Uh, another problem of this uh, statistic is actually using of neural networks. Because for neural networks, uh, they assume that your traffic is somehow balanced. So it learns um, the model using half of samples spam and half of samples of ham. And in this situation, neural network is also not very useful. So this is also quite a complicated topic. So the plans for future are to uh, improve uh, neural network in, in the way to reduce number of uh, the same training vectors. Because currently it just pushes everything. So if a message has a uh, high enough negative score, it just tells that let's learn neural network from it. Actually, that's not quite a good decision, especially for this profile of traffic. So we have uh, improved the situation with spam, but there are obviously areas to improve it better. I'll talk about it a bit later. Another problem that we resolved with RSPMD is actually to uh, sign messages. Because in many cases we have the following situation. We have uh, something like Gmail or other sender, <coughs> and uh, this sender signs their messages using their private key. Uh, mailing lists are usually modifying messages. So they're adding some sort of disclaimers or that this message is has been delivered by some mailing list, blah, 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 and that actually breaks the Kim signatures. What's worse is actually that Gmail in particular rewrites sender, sorry, signs sender. And sender is the special email header that is always rewritten by mailman. And actually all messages from Gmail have broken the Kim signatures. And this situation is not very 
good because many users don't like when uh, they receive messages that are from some, some sort of untrusted sources because you don't see anything good from that. So the trivial solution is actually to add another Dikim signature. And actually, RSPMD is used for this as well. Obviously, there are some other solutions like Open Dikim, but in our case, we have RSPMD, so why not use it for the Dikim signature, the Dikim signing? And in this case, uh, all emails that, are come, that come from uh, FreeBSD are digitally signed by FreeBSD relay. It makes some users happy. Um, actually, uh, there is one thing here. So currently, we sign all emails. Even if we uh, decide that this email is junk, we still sign it. I think that should be fixed at some point to not sign messages that are not trusted and, not, uh, and that are considered as spam, because it doesn't make any sense to sign spam. Another technique is actually to use ARC. So unlike Dikim, ARC uh, provides the way how to organize chains of trust in emails. Um, so in nutshell, it looks like that each relay adds special header. Actually, there are three headers. And each relay increases special counter. So basically, unlike the Kim signature, you don't know when this relay has added this signature. You can obviously match some, something, like, something like received headers. But usually, the received headers are not signed by the Kim for obvious reasons, because they are, well, they can be added in any order. Um, for ARC, uh, there are some senders that are using ARC, in particular Gmail, uh, then uh, Yahoo, and as far as I remember, Microsoft in Office 365. And what's more important that all these providers who are using ARC, they also recognize ARC. So basically, if you have this Dikim signature broken, uh, a message still can be verified because there is some trusted relay, for instance, FreeBSD relay, that tells that this email was successful before I modified it. So the idea here is that you can have a message and you can modify it because you are like trusted relay. And you can tell another relays that the initial message has had like valid signature. And another relays, if they trust you, obviously, they can tell that, okay, I trust FreeBSD, and I know that FreeBSD won't lie about the initial signature, and I can, Im I can improve our sending experience by adding this uh, signature. So that's how it works. That is email that has been passed uh, from uh, my domain to uh, FreeBSD list, and then it uh, was received by Gmail. So Gmail uh, actually signed it one more time. And in this case, you see that the I equal to means that there is the third relay on the way. And also, there are, there are authentication results. So you can see that the body hash from the originator is not verified because it was broken by a mailman. But the ARC verification and the Kim verification afterwards was successful. And actually, it helps to interoperate with uh, email services providers. And it, pro it helps to improve delivery, basically. So what are issues with signing? The main problem, again, is that we can see messages many times. So in some cases, we can see a single message on MX1 like three or four times. Yes. And accordingly, we need to enable and disable signing and checks because we have seen this message. Uh, and that, that's not done, actually, that we should not sign spam. So if we decide that this message is spam, we should stop the signing process and proceed it without signatures because, well, it's stupid. So that's how it's, it's uh, resolved in RSPMD. So there is a small snippet. Uh, so all configuration is stored in local D folder. So we don't modify any vanilla configurations. That's the recommended way how to configure RSPMD because all the time when I have bug reports, 
in many cases users are just modifying vanilla config and don't know how to deal with the upgrade and that's the way how it should be done so here we just define some rules and enable and disable some symbols according to uh, their pass when we see this message so for instance we don't add multiple dkim signatures that's quite important because otherwise if we see this message multiple times if we add multiple signatures from the same domain the one of these signatures won't be valid that's the idea uh, that's not true for arc by the way yes uh, invalid dkim signature and missing D uh, signature is exactly the same uh, that's not missing the Kim signature. I mean, yeah, but I say if it's invalidated or if it's missing, if it's not inserted, it makes no difference. Yes, I know, but <laughs> the, the, the question here is that um, from the perspective of ESP, it, it depends. Because invalid the Kim signature means that your DMARC verification, if you have some sort of DMARC rules, can be totally failed. And if you have no the uh, Kim signature, well, I've implemented many DMARC. Uh, I've implemented DMARC and RSPMD, and I know that, well, RFC tells treat it in this way. But actually, sometimes it shouldn't be treated in this way. Because basically, if you receive message uh, with broken the Kim signature or without the Kim signature from PayPal, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just telling the same thing in other words. <laughs> Sorry. But in this case, it just ensures that uh, you, ha you don't have uh, two signatures. Because one of that signatures will be valid and another will be not valid. Arc works in this situation, but the Kim doesn't. Uh, so now some words about what we want to do actually, because well, currently we have very uh, we have working prototype, but there are still uh, uh, ways how to improve it. So first of all, we have a big pain point now. So there is a special script on Freefall that sends email for developers. And unfortunately, this script adds uh, this disclaimer just after body of message. And as far as you see, it's my message. In my message, you cannot do it. Because in my message, you need to, improve, to insert the signature in, in, inside of my parts. And actually, if you have multi-part alternative parts, you need to insert the signature into both text and HTML. And that's actually not easy. Because there are many situations when you need to insert the signature in, in the right place. And that's why I've decided that it could be a good task for SPMD. Because I, I, I can modify SPMD. So that's, again, uh, some uh, work-in-progress project that can modify message. And it knows about uh, multi-part messages. It can insert signatures for text for HTML parts. It knows how to deal with DSNs. It knows how to deal with 7-bit encoding. It knows how to deal with quoted printable UTF and so on and so forth. So it's pretty much sophisticated. It also can rewrite subject because in some cases you need to do this. So literally it can do things that are typically done in Mailman. But this list is special. It's not done in Mailman. So <laughs> that's what we want to do. And also, we, we think about including here the Kim signatures as well. So every uh, mailing list should be signed. Um, so this part is also missing now. So we don't use Bayesian statistics. And that's actually bad, because basically it's good to have personal bias for our users. We have lots of developers who are uh, good enough and who are eager to train their spam filter and who can do their spam filtering better. Unfortunately, it won't work for everybody because all people have different preferences. And the generic idea is actually quite simple. So we plan to add like generic bias that will be used for everybody with some sort of uh, generic training corpuses. And on top of it, there should be some sort of uh, personalized statistics. It's, it's, uh, it can be implemented in RSPMD, so it stores everything in Redis. And it can actually check, first of all, one thing and then another and adjust things according to, the, to uh, user's preferences. So that's one of the biggest 
plan that we have. Also, we want to present better statistics because this one is from my spam trap. It's not from FreeBSD. But we want to have something similar for FreeBSD to view how many messages we receive, to view how many uh, things we are sending, to view popularity of mailing lists, and so on and so forth. So this is done by a project called ClickHouse. And this is bought from it called Redash. So basically, it also works almost out of the box. The only specific for, for BSD is actually that this system is Linux, more Linux-oriented, so probably it, it will require some sort of manual modifications. It is written in Go, but I, I, I suppose it should work. ClickHouse itself has been ported to FreeBSD, so if you want column-oriented database with lots of analytical features and very high performance in terms of storage, you can check ClickHouse. It's ported to FreeBSD. Also, you can do some sort of analytics. So it's SQL-like. So actually, that's all. It was a very short talk about how we integrate RSPMD in uh, FreeBSD. Uh, my goal was not to describe lots of things about RSPMD because I can talk about this for a very long time. And in this particular uh, presentation, I wanted to explain this uh, practical implementation. So if you have any questions, please ask. Yep. For aliases, what's the plan to train the personal spam filter on the server? So we can just use these aliases as map in RSPMD. As what? As map. So it's possible to read it as hash and then, well, like... Let's say one who has alias receives an email. How can he, on his email provider, not on the BSD server where the alias is managed? The question is how to communicate to the BSD aliasing server that the user marks the message as spam. So uh, we can just add additional aliases for learning. That's how it's done. So basically, you can just tell something like learn spam with some specific key that is available for developers. And we will just accept this message and learn a spam for him, for just for him. Yes? Uh, for junk mail, uh, where the idea is not to sign, it, why isn't it rejected at SMTP level? Because, so that yeah. Uh, that's, that's a complicated question because basically uh, we have false positives. All spam filtering system has false positives. And if you reject that, you won't see it. And in many cases, unfortunately, there are too many broken senders who won't react to DSNs. And that's actually real life. And the idea is actually to sign it and to leave it on user's consideration. Probably we do some sort of uh, statistical mistake, so we can relearn this message as ham, and we are done. If we reject it, we cannot do anything. The, the, the only alternative to this is somehow quarantine this. But quarantining, Aspond supports quarantining, but Postfix requires additional uh, daemon, as far as I remember, to do quarantining. So that's why we just add flag and tell our users that just use this flag to mark these messages as spam in your C rules. That's all. But uh, this has the disadvantage that when emails are forward, spam mails are forwarded over mailing lists, the servers which receive emails from those mailing lists uh, in decrease the reputation of the server that uh, maintains the mailing list. Um, and this is avoided that's by possible, the yes. That's possible, but we plan to reduce reject score, but we, we don't plan to reduce it like to gray level. So there will be there will be definitely some sort of gray zone. Obviously, we are trying to reduce this gray zone as well, but uh, currently we have too high reject right threshold. If we reduce reject threshold, this problem should be resolved because nobody would re would reduce reputation for gray mail. Yes. Ah, that's great. It's more data for them. 
Yes. Um, does it deal with um, encoding mismatches between the string you actually uh, put in in and the, the encoding of the mind bars? So, uh, what it does? So, internally, this text is decoded. So, this code is operating with decoded parts. And actually, for text parts, it's recommended to use quoted printable in any case. So, that's general recommendation. And that's from the JS encodes and quoted printable, forgetting about the original encoding. Why I do so? Because, first of all, if we have 8-bit encoding, it doesn't make any sense because many relays doesn't support 8-bit encoding by default, so they don't announce it. And what should we do, actually, with 8-bit uh, encoding, sending it via these relays? So 8-bit is not an option. Base64 is done by some, well, I would have said broken ESPs, but actually many people are sending text in Base64. But actually it adds lots of overhead. So the only sane solution from my point of view is just to encode everything in uh, quoted printable. And furthermore, it encodes everything in UTF-8. So if the original encoding was like something like COI-8 that dash R, it should re recode at UTF-8. That's a limitation, but unfortunately, I don't have uh, to support all these uh, zoo of encodings because some of encodings are absolutely brain damaged, to tell the truth. <laughs> like yes, it will record at UDF 8. But it works for UDF 8. <laughs> so that's the, po that's the point here. Yeah. Actually, in uh, GB uh, something and Shift Gs, you can encode uh, Kyrillic letters as well. So they are full Unicode <laughs> compatible. But again, that's what I'm talking about: brain damage encoding. <laughs> right, Daniel? Yep. Uh, I have many questions. Uh, so one of the with breaking the TLS signatures, an example of Gmail, is operates under two domains: GoogleMail.com and gmail.com. The first one has DMARC policy of quarantine and the second has policy of known. If you break a signature with policy of known, there, is, there are no implications. And yes. I think another DKM signature for your domain, which basically does not compensate for breaking the other signature. Well, it depends, but the only solution for this problem, for this particular problem, is actually ARC. I don't see any resol resolution about how to fix broken DMARC when you have to do it because of like standards. For instance, you need to write this GDPR node. I think everybody knows about that, but you have to do it, uh, and you have to uh, break. From address? Ch change a sender. Oh, change <laughs> from, yes. Uh, that's another option, but uh, sender rewriting is actually something that also quite difficult to implement properly. I'm not talking about SRF. From. Doable. Doable, but. Okay. Just your reading. Eight seconds. Yes. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.